Welcome to the Candy Shop Show, special edition with Christopher Stephen Jacobs. Well, listen, uh, this is uh, June 18th, 2016. We're two days away from the all-important summer solstice on on Monday, and um, we're just very excited to hear from the Galactics today. And um, we have a, a nice group. That has, that has joined us today. So we'll just uh, jump right on in to the Candy Shop Show, part of the Diamond Network. And I um, want to thank uh, everyone who joined us last uh, Wednesday for the Candy Shop Show with Mark Sorensen. Uh, he will be returning this following Wednesday as... Um, he, he has been led to the Candy Shop show to to reveal the information that the Galactics has been sharing with him and who only asked him to share publicly um, about four to six weeks ago. So uh, remember to tune in to uh, to Mark's show. Mark Sorensen is on Facebook coming uh, to us from uh, near Toronto. Canada. All right, let me start by opening the candy jar tree. And my goodness, the heat wave that America has had, and suddenly this morning, we didn't, the weatherman didn't tell us, but we got a refreshing rain here uh, in, in, in the Ozarks. And oh, the flowers are just blooming, all the wildflowers. Uh, watermelon antelope popped up out of the ground last night. It's just you know, we got to turn off our air conditioners even. It's just been so pleasant this morning. Well, uh, let's uh, remember to make your own plans for your rituals for Monday with the uh, summer solstice and uh, keep setting those intentions. Boy, uh, Cynthia really does a wonderful job of inspiring us to uh, dream big and, and, and in detail, just like uh, Anastasia uh, taught her. She and I have both read, uh, and, and, and near several of us, uh, part of the Diamond Network, have already read all 10 of the Anastasia books. And I invited uh, Cynthia and Mir uh, Friday night, last night, into the Anastasia call that is uh, being hosted on a different channel by um, by Desmond from uh, Alberta, Canada, and uh, it was just a great sharing. Cynthia uh, was uh, quite inspiring to the uh, North Americans that were on that call, and that call happens at 5.15 every uh, Friday afternoon Central Time. If anyone else would, would like to, to uh, get, get onto that, I think uh, it's a real treat. I wanted to share that as part of the um, um, candy jar tree. Now, the news has been uh, up and down and all over the place. And uh, just as the price of Bitcoin, Bitcoins are going up, up, up. And I am uh, teaching some classes locally and, and doing some trading. Um, and if anyone would like to know more about that uh well the best website is called localbitcoms.com and my username there is candy cane 2015 <laughs> of course so candy cane 2015 and bitcoin well we're just going to be uh in encouraging the uh internet currency and and getting away from the cabal's uh 
crazy um, uh, IMF type uh, uh, Federal Reserve banking systems. Well, I hear a lot of confirmations besides just from Benjamin Fulford that uh, indeed General Dunford has uh, uh, taken over the uh, important control of the Federal Reserve System and our government uh, with uh, no objections from uh, Obama. So um, with that, let me uh, encourage you all to have a very a special uh, week in, in your meditations and your and and uh, expect more and more with your own direct communication with the galactics and I'm, I'm going to uh, ask the galactics to come and join us especially the raw and as we all relax and listen to Sunny Holmes from California uh, lead us in the law of one er- that our intentions with it. Sunny? Yes, hi Candy and Chris and everyone. It's an honor to start this show with a law of one and set the tone. And so I will begin. We are all one. When one is harmed, all are harmed. When one is helped, all are helped. Therefore, in the name of who I am, and I am one with all there is, I ask that only that which is of the highest good of all concerned happen, and I give thanks that it be done, and so be it, and so it is. Blessings to all. Happy solstice and full moon, everyone. And it's a really powerful time that we're in right now. You can really feel it. Transformational time. Hello. Did we lose you, Candy? Yeah. Hmm. Hello, everyone. Hello. Good. Yeah, did we lose you? Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, you did, and it's never happened before, but apparently the recording kept going. So uh, I was afraid that I wasn't. I was afraid that I was still muted when I did that, but I guess I wasn't. <laughs> I did unmute. Okay. Uh, Chris, did you hear Sonny say the law of one? Yes, yeah, I heard the entire thing. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Well, uh, I've never been kicked off like that before, Mm -hmm. but let's just uh, uh, set our intentions for protection uh, electronically and spiritually and physically and in every way for the highest good of all of those that uh, are uh, part of the Diamond Network. All right. Uh, well, Chris, uh, uh, this is uh, wonderful that you're here. Have you had a past reading recently that you wanted to share at the beginning? Uh, well, there were. Uh, there's been several things that have occurred recently to me and to other people that I have spoken to that have all kind of intertwined into what the Ra wanted to bring through today. And but there's, a, there's a brief one. I won't go completely into the, the past life, but needless to say, it was extremely complicated to where the being's physical body was still around and carried one of my soul shards within it. I couldn't retrieve this one because the guides and the galactics and them were stating that this this particular individual was being used as a teaching tool for others, other souls, and that I had to detach myself from him. So what I did was uh, a friend of mine, which I don't know if she wants to be named here, so I will just make her anonymous, gave me a shard 
that I uh, uh, to replace the missing one that the guides eventually called the shard of origin and when I accepted this I noticed time itself within my energy completely going backwards in time lapse it was just like if you see on television you know where somebody's using time lapse word but this was backwards and it went back before the corruption took place with this other individual and my connection to him was severed well then the, the not only was the connection severed and this shard replaced but it repaired anything that was under strain any other lifetime or dimensions that were corrupted that I knew nothing about and this is a concept that a friend of mine called returning to origin Andrew Bartzitz calls it returning to the zero point I found out I knew nothing about what he had said about it this was just pointed out to me later on and I uh, it was it was very very interesting well then I was told about the nature of soul groups and I always wondered why my guide Simeon put the term soul groups in quotes meaning it was probably not an accurate term and I told um, uh, he told me and the Ra told me that the most accurate term for soul grouping or soul groups is a term called genetic resonance or genetic resonance frequency like we are brought together like a tree not necessarily just a circle but it's like a tree of life like the symbol of the tree of tree of life and it's done both energetically and genetically and that's what the human race is tied into and it goes back to the we are all one scenario and I've always wondered about some of the reports out there where energies are merging soul groups are merging just like this has happened on the diamonds network many times this happened in my book happened many channelings I've seen where, where beings energetically become one with other energy collectives well I came to find out that this actually happened what I was witnessing actually happened a long time ago and there was a time delay like looking out into space and seeing something that happened a very long time ago the further out you go it was like that I was witnessing something that had taken place many millennia ago and the, the galactics were just teaching me about it and teaching me about it slowly and they said any channelings out there that talk about souls being mushed into the same vessel or being uh, mushed into groups kind of like forcibly brought into a collective uh, you know outside of free will and outside of uh, this resonance frequency is false and they were telling me they were showing me very specific things like uh, instances where people say oh there's the soul of this being and the soul of this being inside of this one person and uh, they're both together speaking as one and all that that doesn't happen that way they they told me very specifically what was in, what was correct and what was incorrect and they said even though there are multiple perspectives out there there is some information that has clouded the issue there they gave me two examples they said of a soul grouping or this genetic resonance frequency they said think of a tree with deep roots and arms reaching towards the sky uh, and then they said think of another one that has hybrided with that tree and that the two of them create another one with hybrid fruit or hybrid uh, anything that's growing on the tree and combining that and then they're all connected root wise and in the sky and they said the other version of mashing two energies together would be the same as mashing two pieces of fruit together it doesn't work so they they told me that they were going to come through today and speak about this issue in more detail than I could translate they might speak in their own you know vernacular and uh, people scratch their heads for a minute but uh, they they were wanting to come through and I can see in the room here there are several blue avians in here and Raul Tim is here and there was one there's uh, my guide Simeon is here and there's one person here I was not expecting to see today and that's Valiant Thor so uh, they're all well here. this is just this is just wonderful wonderful welcome everyone and and thank you, Chris. I think you're doing a wonderful job of explaining a very complex uh, uh, 
concept, and, and I'm glad that the galactic field, that the Diamond Network and our audience is ready for it and, and, and letting it spread. And, and wow, so did you feel physically and spiritually much, much, much better after you uh, uh, reached zero turn point and, and came back? Yes, uh, what, what happened was after it was, uh, was completed, I found that the connection I had to this other being who was incredibly unemotional, he was very callous and very uh, uh, malicious, uh, I noticed it was dampening some of my emotions, making them seem foreign or alien in some way. And afterwards, uh, everything was just fine. I uh, I noticed that I could feel things properly again. I thought it was what I was experiencing prior to that was just the after effects of channeling, and I did not know I was being interfered with by a source that could not be severed unless I went to the zero point, and it was affecting me on an emotional energy level. And now that has been wiped clean completely. Wow. Well, uh, may I ask? Uh how long did you feel this dearth of feet of emotions from this, this individual? Apparently it was there my entire life, and I didn't realize it. Wow. Well, what a, what a healing and blessing for you, uh, because this individual, of course, would be your age or older. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, uh, Raw and Valiant Thor, uh, welcome to the Candy Shop Show. Uh, y- you have the floor. All right. I'll see who wants the floor first. Oh, okay, they shoved Valiant Thor to the front. Okay. I was expecting Raw Tim first, but okay. <laughs> uh, let me see here. He, uh, he so- I seldom hear from this man, but apparently when he comes through, it's something incredibly important. So... I'm going to let him have the floor here. He, okay, here we go. <clears throat> Greetings to you all. You know me as Valiant Thor. I have spoken on shows past about my connection and my being your current president of the United States, Barack Obama. I wish to clear up some more things about this, seeing as this one now understands the zero point or the point of origin, or returning to origin, as some have called this. My individual original body is, as you know, the President of the United States, as I've said, when my friend, dear friend, and, as you call him, bodyguard, Omar, is with me. This is when you recognize me on your television. He is with me and near me at all times. This is how you can tell the original, quote-unquote, me. However, the Cabal, as I have stated, have made clones of myself they thought they could control the floor or the stage with. This is something I would not tolerate. So, in the instance of what your friend Mark Sorensen has said with the many arms of a higher soul, as in nine beings attached thereto, I will reiterate and confirm this concept with myself. But there are all of these clones that I did not wish to fall into the Cabal's hands or control. So therefore, in the way that their draconian forces control people's spinal columns by putting attachments on the spines of those individuals, and also amongst the general population through the Arconian binary network. I have devised a way to where I can be in many different places at once. Yes, I am a physical being, with physical needs and physical attributes and physical everything. But in this instance, I can actually be like the Agarthan dreamers, but in a waking state and send my consciousness into an attachment of my own devising. This will cause me to be at those many places at once, including the hidden news reporter of whom I will not mention here. But, in the instance of this genetic resonance, these clones are essentially myself. 
this original Barack Obama figure is, yes, originally myself, but the cabal added a generous amount of reptilian DNA in there, thinking a draconian influence would negate anything that I plan to do in the future. This is not so. Any times in the past that I have mentioned that I have some reptilian ancestry that is only a half-truth, this one was not ready for the genetic resonance frequency and point-of-origin information at that time, so I could only transmit through him what he was ready to send out to the public. Now I can actually expand on this subject and say with all certainty that I am in control of these remaining clones. Before, I said there was only one, and this was not a lie. However, the Cabal had other hidden ones than hidden chambers underneath your world. This is something that I did not know about myself until much later, until Omar came to me and found that he had been cloned himself. So, this particular instance, I could not tolerate such behavior upon the world in this fashion. So, I stepped forth and implanted and implemented plans of my very own to take control of these clones. Now, the one that was revealed to be as being one of the heads of the Cabal, or three heads of the snake, I myself have taken up this position without the Cabal ever knowing that I have done this. Yes, I am speaking of this now on this show, and at this very moment in time. This is very true. However, I am in control of the situation, and they know nothing, and they are none the wiser. The, clo the clone that was... Omar's clone has been taken care of by Omar, and he now has taken up the second mantelpiece, as it were, on the Cabal stage. The only one left is the one you call Dick Cheney, and he is none the wiser that we have taken up the other two ruling positions of the Cabal, thus incapacitating a majority of the, the order of the snake. This is what I came to say today. Thank you. Oh, we, we are just honored to to hear these revelations here and now, and and they're wonderful revelations. And so, uh, two of the three are uh, under the control of our dear dear friend, uh, Valiant Thor and uh, Omar and the Galactics behind them. This is this is wonderful. Uh, uh, Chris, do you have a, a, a comment or further explanation of, of, of these amazing things that uh, Valiant Thor or uh, Barack Obama has shared with us today? Yes, I, uh, you know, before I couldn't completely comprehend why you know, suddenly he was in several different places at one time, uh, that meaning Valiant Thor, and then also Omar being Venusian in origin, how a uh, clone was able to be taken from him. All they really did was leave little skin samples and stuff behind, and the Cabal was able to get DNA from them, and they couldn't fill in the rest, so they filled it in with uh, reptilian uh, DNA, which bonded to it fairly quickly. It's like in Jurassic Park where they couldn't fill in the uh, the rest of the dinosaur DNA, so they added frog and all this other uh, DNA in there to make up the genetic gaps, thinking it was similar and close enough. And that's what they did with Omar's clone and with uh, Barack Obama's clone. Now, Dick Cheney himself, he's, he's full uh, on draconian. I know this for certain. He's not human at all. He just makes himself look that way. But uh, if Valiant Thor is standing next to him, uh, and so is Omar, that one's going to be, be quickly replaced as well. If they rec uh, replace the entire ruling class, uh, then there's nothing to worry about completely from the Cabal. But yeah, though the way they did this is with these clones, of course, they're going to have uh, Valiant Thor and Omar's genetic material, even with the filled-in reptilian DNA. Uh, now, in the spinal column, being like the kund being the Kundalini, they were able to make an attachment themselves made of light instead of uh, the snake ones that are made of shadow or the Arconian or Draconian um, energy entities. We call them demons. 
uh, would occupy that, that area. Well, what he did is he made one out of light and a series of implants that would look, if we could see one physically, it would look like a glowing white uh, snake or some kind of cord with a bunch of lights around it. And he uh, input, uh, put that into the spines of these clones, and so did Omar. And therefore they were able to basically use them like in the movie Avatar, where the, the man uh, jumps in that machine and is able to uh, occupy the body of the of the that alien. When also in the movie John Carter, which I saw for the first time last night, I don't want to ruin uh, the movie for anybody who hasn't seen that one. I would recommend that one completely. Uh, where John Carter finds out that when he's on Mars, he has a sleeper or dreamer back on Earth, and he's basically a copy running around on Mars. So when the when the the, the copy can only be killed if the original is killed, and I and I just was. Uh, uh, wondering, you, you know, if they channeled that information because they spoke directly about the dreaming technology in a very subtle way, but they they uh, they mentioned it. So I I'm actually glad somebody put that in in the movies, and I believe Avatar was along the similar lines, and that's kind of the, the kind of the uh, method that uh, Valiant Thor chose to use with all the clones. Well, that is wonderful, and so this is why they felt safe in and sharing this information with the Diamond Network because they were about to uh, do the same to Cheney and be in control of all three of the leading members of the cabal. They're, they're doing that basically as, as I speak. Yes, yeah, the, well, two of the positions have, have, been, have been filled, but their mental capacity is as such where they can make them believe that they are still in control, like Babindagoth always told me, the Cabal was not in control. And then it was Valiant Thor that has showed me some of these things, and also Omar that has showed me some of these things, where they can make it so they can hide amongst the, the, the people as certain forms. Just like also in the movie, John Carter, they, uh, granted these were the bad guys that were in the movie, these monks that were in it that controlled hyper... Um, uh, hyper technology, hyper advanced technology, and they were able to cloak themselves as just a member of the the population, and, and be able to manipulate things within the population. Well, think of the the positive version of that, and that's what Valiant Thor and Omar and some other Venusians are doing. Wonderful, wonderful. So, can we look forward to? No more false flags like Orlando and, and, and a rapid change of, of events uh, as, as the cabal influence uh, melts away. Okay, I'm going to let him answer this one. He, he Okay, he's coming back now. <clears throat> yes, dear Candy and listeners of this show, the false flags that you know about are indeed melting away, as you say. However there is still a good test or quiz that is has been implemented into all of this. Granted, the cabal, other, other underlings, as this one would put it, still implement certain things, such as false flags, some of which, however, are created as a non-distraction, and they are of my and my crew's devising. This does not mean anything horrible has taken place. I am not trying to denigrate the horrendous nature of what happened in Orlando on three different points of, what, of which this one is still currently unaware. Some are distraction, yes, but for me to slowly compl and completely infiltrate the cabal forces, even though I am that of the ruling class now, I must slowly and surely integrate my way through the false flags, and slowly but surely start to pick them apart, as you would say, in this instance of Orlando. This is something uh, that I'm about to say that will shock most people. I can honestly say, here and now, no one has died in that event. I am not trying to denigrate this entire process. There were people harmed in that event, but I am saying, here and now, that the Cabal uses this same technique that I have used to take control of these clones, to take control of clones, 
they were using the, as this one calls it, the avatar technique in that instance to integrate in some public figures that would eventually cause an emotional stir. We are not saying do not be emotional about instances such as this. These things sadden us greatly. And as I said before, I did not say certain people were not injured. There were innocent bystanders. But the ones that were reported to have died that day, and may not have even have known this themselves at the time, were clones operating within the frequencies of the Arconian binary network and were connected to the Cabal's version of the Dreamer technology, very much like your movie Avatar or John Carter. This is a saddened truth, but me and my brethren are working steadfastly to excommunicate, as it were, these particular people that are doing these particular atrocities. I use the word excommunicate because my dear friend Unia, which you know of as Pope Francis, is also steadfastly working on this particular issue to take away this technology from the Cabal. Therefore, there will be no false flags past a certain point in time. I cannot promise that some will not fall through the cracks, as you would say, but there will be less and less as time goes on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Valiant Thor. Uh, you honor us with the, all this help and these wonderful intentions, and, and it is a blessing to look forward to no more false flags. It, it's, uh, as you say, something a, a bit shocking for us to learn and wrap our, our mind around. Um, sometimes our galactic friends say, no one has died, using the old-fashioned definition of death. But I think uh, uh, you were not using it in that way, that uh, it was because they weren't maybe uh, fully human, and that's uh, why they didn't uh, die as humans die. Um, Chris, would you like to say anything more about uh, Valiant Thor's uh, information? Yes, I believe what he was getting at was, like, say you have a person in a piece of technology somewhere, anywhere on planet Earth. They could be even be in an orbital, orbital platform in space somewhere. And say you have a cloned individual somewhere else. Now, that person in that, I'll just call it a pod for all intents and purposes, until I get the real name for it, uh, will connect on a com fundamental level to this particular clone. Now, this clone will have no memory of what is going on. Sometimes they do, sometimes they do not. It just depends on whether they want a real reaction to what's going on, a real emotional reaction instead of an act, because an act can always be seen, at least by the trained eye, can always be seen. But... In the instance of, say, that image that was popping up on the Internet of the same girl over and over again, that would be one of these these clones that was, was operating. That, in some instances, I believe it was known, in some instances not. Just like if, say, that person were killed in some way, or that clone were killed in some way, they could just generate another one. Uh, there's also a fair amount of holographic activity going on, too, that I'm not sure what the extent of that is just yet. But in the instance of, say, Orlando or some of the other shooting instances, say the clone is shot, they could just have the body, quote-unquote, taken somewhere uh, in the normal fashion, and people think somebody has died, and then they just recover it and use it again somewhere else, in a, in a completely different part of the planet somewhere else. And I came to find out well, this happens why quite frequently. Seen, yeah, we've seen these uh, uh, false flag actors appear in several false flags. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't know the complete extent of it until Valiant Thor told me his complete involvement on the good portion of, of that equation, the good half of that equation. That's why he stepped it up in recent days, uh, or recent months, to uh, to combat this problem. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, 
uh, initially when I heard about Orlando, and of course, uh, uh, you know, people were a little shocked that the media would come out uh, uh, that weekend and say it's the greatest uh, uh, terrorist attack in our history, uh, except for 9-11. Um, and uh, you know, we knew that the cabal was wanting to fight back against us, uh, the good good one folk. Uh, and, and, and then, of course, other people were appalled uh, on the Internet that, that, that either one of those massacres, uh, I, I mean, that it would be called the second greatest one because, of course, the second greatest one in, in American history was, was wounded me. Over 200 innocent children and, and, and uh, mothers were, were killed at wounded me. And to uh, 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 claim that Orlando was, was worse than that, that was, uh, that was an, an awful thing for um, the media to say. And, uh, uh, and I, I had forgotten the piece of history that, that the... Uh, American government had uh, demanded that the Indians peacefully turn in their guns. And most of them uh, there at the Wounded Knee area did turn in their guns. And that's when uh, they started firing on them all. Uh, so that was, uh, that was quite a, a, a sad piece of, of American history. But uh, it, it was sad that, that, that the emotions were, were brought up again, too, regarding uh, events in Orlando. Well, does, does Valiant Thor have some more now, or, or will Raul Tim join us? It looks like, uh, looks like Raul Tim is the one stepping forward, and Valiant Thor is stepping, stepping back now, and he's giving the thumbs up. He's sitting back towards the back of my room now. And I can see, you know, Raul Tim and the Blue Avians have stepped forward. I want to see if it's Raul Tim or Simeon that wants to talk. Oh, and they're saying technically both since they're part of the, the Raw. So, uh, I'll, uh, let's see if Raul Tim wants to talk first. Okay. Yeah, it's Raul Tim that wants to talk first. Okay. <clears throat> Greetings to you all on this call. We are Ra, and we stand here before you in the reverence of this new energy matrices that is forming within this new time continuum this as some have called it a tangent in the space-time continuum we are here to tell you that any negative connotations that you would see on your television and computer regarding these negative connotations regarding the numbers of three and anything divisible by three are indeed a false flag, as you would put it. This, what I'm about to say, will shock people just as much as what Valiant Thor has just posed. We, the Ra, have seen within this Arconian binary network the causes of all obsessive compulsive disorders within your populace and depressive disorders, and bipolar disorders, and the like. Though the Draconian Empire was responsible for this initially, this frequency has been spread throughout, and has caused people to see things that aren't necessarily factual. Yes, number one, and number three, the three is the importance of the first geometric shape, and... With that said, the number three is within all beings, as the triads, as this one calls it. The number three, geometrically, however, has been misused by people saying and stating, oh, all deaths happen in threes, or all bad things happen in threes. You've seen this in your media. You've seen this in your movies, your television, and the like. This is a manifestation issue where people honestly believe when they're being told in their minds to do things in threes. This is somehow truth and not fiction. And I am here as the Ra to say this is complete fictitious nonsense. This is what I 
I'm going to explain now to you. Say your energy vibration is vibrating at a certain level where you are perceiving this three. This does not mean that you must always do things in threes. If you have the compulsion to do things in threes and make it into a ritual, that is fine. But then it can be, as this one says, bastardized into the form of obsessive compulsive disorders where people have to do things in threes or not step on cracks in the sidewalks or in the instance of, say, door locking three times or taking three sips of a drink three times or divisible by three, six, and nines. This is the bastardization of this holy process and this is something that I wish to call out, as you humans say, on the call this evening. This, in, this unfortunately interferes with the genetic resonance, or soul grouping, as some have called it. This genetic resonance is exactly as this one has described, between the fruit trees and the fruits being mashed together. This particular analogy works quite well in many vernaculars and many cultures and the like. All cultures will recognize these features, and all cultures will recognize the value or lack thereof of the continuous counting in the brain, to, and also the inability to look away from things that must be read. What I am trying to understand, what I am trying to get people to understand, is this. When you look at something also and have the compulsion to always read what you see, this is also the Arconian binary network at work. This, is, this obsessive compulsive behavior was never intended to be part of the genetic resonance frequency, and this okay. must be abolished within this particular time and age that we all now find ourselves living within, this new timeline that is not necessarily the negative tangent that people think it and believe it to be. This negative timeline that people keep spouting off about, as you humans say, where there'll be wars and famine and all of that. This is completely negative, as been, has been reiterated on these shows and in many other ways through many other seers. This is more Arconian binary network programming. There's another bit of programming that I must touch upon in your societal situations between your interactions with men and women, or in the instance of all people, for the feminine energy and the masculine energy. We wish to clear that up because we are not favoring just a man and a woman to be together. We do not wish to be misinterpreted. So, in this instance, I will continue. The reason these two energies have been denigrated and separated is because of this Arconian binary network and a series of implants that were placed in all people in generations past by your cabal forces and other negative entities such as the Draconians and the Arconians. But, in this instance, the one thing I am getting at is this one has been reluctant to look into this subject for personal reasons, but in the instance of peace, in the instance of spreading the messages, I will say that when you have a prejudice against a certain age grouping, or a prejudice against a certain type of person, or a, pers uh, a, a basic bias against anything. This is a, a bit of programming. Say there is a relationship on the verge of love, but there is an objection to age differences. The, I am telling you now, there is no such thing as an age difference. Your cabal has created a technology known as age regression and age acceleration technology. Before, this was not mentioned because it was a safety issue to this one and many others, but we feel comfortable now as the Ra informing people of this very hostile piece of technology. Though we have mentioned it briefly in conjunction with the one you call Corey Good, I will now expound on this particular issue. Within the harvester contingencies and your cabal groupings and the ones you call the Greys and Draconian Empire. There is a piece of technology that connects to every nerve in the body. It causes it to accelerate and decelerate the deep muscle tissues and causes can cause rapid aging or rapid de-aging. 
say you have a person and you have another person that have both spent time in the grand illusion together. They were the same age and look as everyone else. However, if the cabal and the dark agenda wish to, as you say, screw with these two individuals, they would instill a form of programming that I have just mentioned and place them in the grand illusion at two separate age brackets, seemingly so they would never become one again. This has happened more times on your world than I wish to recount, but I can tell you this, thousands of people along the illusion lines and non-illusion lines have been messed with in this way. This saddens us to the core because this goes against the very core of the teachings of the law of one and oneness in general. This saddens us greatly because people give in to the very programming that could actually be cancelled out by love itself. Love energy is the only thing that matters that could actually fight off this technology. What I mean is, when someone is in love, they can see anything as possible. Another way to defeat this Arconian binary net programming is to see yourself as being your true, authentic self. This network would not allow people to be this, therefore it must be fought by reaching what this one knows as the zero thought point, and also going back to origin, as this one says, will raise the person's frequency beyond the point of being influenced by this binary network. So, we say to you now, on this call, anyone within earshot of this channeling will be offered the shard of origin. This shard of origin will then be spread across the vastness of your world and help take down the past wounds of that of the order of the snake and the fang bites that have ruined lives and the bites and the thoughts and the darkness that has infiltrated this planet for far too long though some of it was lesson some of it was oppression and this is where we draw the line in the sand. We are Ra, and we offer now the shard of origin within the chest cavities of everyone here. We hold this in front of you and ask only that you accept that your past doesn't necessarily need to be set in stone, but can be just as fluid as your future and just as real as your present. That is all. We are raw. Blessings to all. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ra. And I just uh, want to accept your gift of the shard of origin into my chest cavity. And I just welcome myself up to love and, and, and miracles and, and strength. And, and I give thanks for this, this gift, dear Ra. And so it is on this day in what we would call the age of Mithram, you would call it June 16th, June 18th, 2016. Your numbers are not as concurrent as the true timing, so translation is difficult. We apologize for this, but on this exact moment in time, concurrent with the dimensional standard in the current galactic age. We say it now, and so it is. Thank you. And so it is. So be it. And I hope that my listeners uh, accepted their shards of origin at the same time as I accepted mine and uh, if, if not uh, immediately then as soon as uh, as you can as during this call or YouTube show or immediately uh, afterwards okay yes it looks like the uh Ra are now stepping back and 
they are hanging in the background here. The uh, shard that they have give, uh, offered to everyone, they are transmitting to me now that thousands of people have been offered this. They said our voice here has been far s more spread out than we know. And people have been offered this shard and have accepted. Some will hear it later in the recording. Some are hearing it right now. Some may not even have heard the recording, but have heard the energy frequency, and their soul self is accepting this. So far more, this is far more reaching than we even know of right now. Wow. So people are accepting it on the subconscious level as opposed to the conscious level is one way of saying it. Well, I just felt a real huge uh, blast of energy and 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 my space here in, uh, on my land, my space of love land is just uh, um, uh, vibrating with with the energy, and I am I'm so excited. Uh, that love is going to be entering uh, our world more and more, and my own. So many, many thanks to uh, the Raw for responding to our request that ev events happen to the, for the highest good of all concerned. And they are now waving, and they're all give. They give the thumbs up. I always see them uh, standing, giving the, giving the thumbs up. I see Valiant Thor is giving the thumbs up. Everybody is, and now there is who else is standing next to me? Uh, I am seeing a Syrian person standing next to me. I'm not quite familiar here who it is. I have to check identity. Oh, interesting. This is somebody that I've known for quite some time. It's just that she was coming across the threshold differently this time. Okay, this is somebody that has spoken on this show several times in the past. This uh, You know her as Irata, one of the nine muses, or her actual Syrian given name is Lanier Tyr, and she wishes to finish off the call tonight, or tonight, today, with uh, a final conclusion to what has just been said. <clears throat> so I'll give her the floor here. <clears throat> Greetings, everyone. You know me as Rado, one of the nine muses in your Greek mythology. My name is Lanier Tyr. As you know, the last time I spoke of, I spoke of the horrors that went on in the backstage. I would like to reiterate though, that those horrors have not been forgotten. Those horrors can turn into a light shining in the darkness within your current staging area, as this one would call it, and within the illusion, as everyone calls it as well. This love energy that we help to spread within the backstage in the darkest of times, not only for this one, but for hundreds of other people, has now spread into your staging area and is now being helped spread by this shard of origin. This one knows it quite well. This one knows me quite well as being part of a soul grouping, as others would say, combined with his own as a twin flame. This other person I will not mention here, but suffice it to say that this bonding that everyone shares with this other soul grouping is an eternal one of not only unconditional love but that of higher aspirations along with love such as creativity such as artwork through creativity and love such as writing through creativity and love and such as teaching through creativity and love these are the virtues that humanity is supposed to have and of the violent past that it is haunted by. This violent past was never a human trait, though there is a balance between the yin and the yang. The violent past was accentuated and augmented by the Draconian Empire along with the Arconian invasions of your ancient history. These no longer apply in this new energy 
This is a hard pill to swallow for some, such as the remaining chieftains that remain on your planet from the Draconian Empire, who wish nothing more than dominance and hatred. This new energy does not sit well with them, and they are, as you say, dropping like flies in, in the proverbial sunlight. This does not always please us because we wish to see all beings join us in the sun, including them, though their history in the past was ju uh, just as despicable as what some humans have in their own past. This no longer matters. History is important, yes, and you must pay attention to it so you do not repeat it. This is most important. But the past is important. Then it ceases to be important. Live in the now. Find that creative spark. Fall in love with someone. Find and climb that highest mountain peak. Find and walk that longest trail. And find that someone that you are meant to always be with. Though destiny is subjective in nature, there is a bit of, as you say, pre-planning in the whole process. Th though some things have been disrupted by the dark agenda, there are those things that come to fruition only when the darkness has been seen, experienced, then abated. Thank you. Wonderful, w wonderful, uh, that this is a great message for uh, hope, for, for more love in, in each of our lives. Yes, yes. Uh, she uh, she was quite adamant to to uh, come through to uh, reiterate. Uh, no matter what negative things you see, for one, don't always take them at face value. Two, don't always buy into it and get into that whole fear cycle. And always be creative and kind and loving to one another is what she was saying. No matter what takes place, and this was the point she was trying to make for the end of the call today. And that, that is a, a, a beautiful message for us. Yes. Chris, when, when Ra referred to our time period, uh, he, I, instead of calling it June 18th, I, I think he called it the, something like the age of men, or, or did you understand what they call this age? Yes. Uh, yes, there are five. There were five galactic ages in our history. They see it in more of a round, spherical concept. And uh, there were five galactic ages. I don't remember the names of the other four. Uh, they uh, they had. I know one of them was uh, Tinron, Adaron. I think was one of them. And we're in the last galactic age, which is the fifth one, and that is Mithron. Or Mithras, or something of that nature, because I've heard other species mention the age of Mithron or Mithras before, and I'd always wondered what that was. And then uh, one of the Anunnaki by the name of Lomos told me about the five galactic ages, and they all had a major name to them, very much like we would uh, put uh, names of months on the calendar. But it's a lot more simplified than just uh, just the months on the calendar. They they read things by whole ages and star positions and and galactic uh, alignments and things of that nature. They see it as more simplified than what we've come up with. Sure, certainly. And so, uh, uh, would it be M-I-T-H-R-O-S? Uh, let's see. M-I-T... Yes, it would, it would definitely. It would be Mithron or Mithros. I've heard both both terms used. Okay, very good. Uh, and and uh, of course we understand that. Say on the galactic times of the equinoxes and the sol solstices, which mm. is a, 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 a kind of a universal uh, point. Yes. Of yes. four on mm -hmm. our planet, and so these these great things, and and so we're looking forward to uh, an increase of uh, waves of energy 
uh, coming this this Monday and Tuesday time period of the summer solstice. And and with this bright summer of 2016, the year of change, let it be change for more creativity, kindness, and love in each of our lives. And thank you so much, Chris, for uh, helping us understand all of this and sharing with with the raw and valiant Thor. Thank you. Yes, uh, they they're becoming the messages that they're bringing through are coming through more clear to me now. In the past, they were slightly confusing, uh, but now that I'm attaining what they they call to and refer to as spherical thinking, it, uh, there are a lot of these concepts that are uh, becoming more clear to me, and I'm able to retranslate them into a more linear construct than before. Wonderful, wonderful. Wow, Chris, thank you again. <laughs> and and, and, and uh, tell me, uh, when when can the Diamond Network hear from you again? Uh, let me see. Uh, it's going to be sometime in August. I haven't hammered out an exact date yet, but also this coming, let me see, let me, let me look at my... June 27th, you had said. On June 27th, night, yes, believe. yes. That was for the Monday night one. Yeah, and for the candy shop uh, show, uh, I'm going to have to uh, hold off until August at some point. But it will be around in that time. Okay, uh, lovely. Well, uh, I appreciated what was shared about uh, you know reaffirming what Mark uh, Sorison uh, had, had to say. Um, as, uh, and he's very strong in that he, he's got four that, uh, there are four of them that have come together there uh, to uh, to work uh, and, and all nine from, from the Atlantean period have found each other mm-hmm. in this timeline so so when you can make a, a more direct connection with, with Mark uh He's leaving an open invitation for that as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I would like to talk to him sometime. That sounds interesting. Yes, yes. And and, and is there uh, any final comment that anyone online, we appreciate you taking some time out on your Saturday, uh, that, that would like to say something to Chris before we, we hang up? Uh, yes, uh, Sunny, um, yes. Yeah. We're both we're talking at the same time here. <laughs> it was just wonderful, um, very very wonderful information, and I something I'd like to listen to over and over to really something. So it, it was just very very special, and very thank thank you all for this sharing this morning. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Sonny. I'm glad yeah. that could be informative and helpful. Yes, and I certainly we'll we'll listen to it again because there's so much there, you know, so much there to take in. But it, I found it was quite clear, you know, like you said, I found it was clear and con- concise enough to understand it better than sometimes in the past. There's just so much to, you know, to to understand and integrate. But this is just really amazing information, you know. And, uh, so thank you so much, and look forward to the next time you can be here with us. But happy journeying and moving and everything we're involved with. Very much valued. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Sonny. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's, it should be an interesting move. <laughs> should Should each of us be uh, uh, expecting to, or set our intentions to return to our individual zero point I I could I could say that honestly yes to that because everybody's still part of the oneness whether they're they know they're connected to it or not uh, so their own individual creative selves and individual loving selves no matter what technique you use uh, will be will be good enough yes mm-hmm. oh and about the aging thing that was very interesting to me about the for those of us that that really see ourselves as being in a certain age time frame 
can this be uh, actually changed and reversed in these energies that that they were discussing or you were discussing? Mm-hmm. You know, it, that we can we don't we no longer think that we're too old for certain things. You know, too old to find our our soulmates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know, because of the conditions of our bodies, etc. You know, some things such as that. So that was interesting to me. Yeah, I'm glad that I'm glad they brought that they brought that point up. Yeah. Uh, they saying all the all the biases are nothing but programming. Mm-hmm. And that we should be finding our soulmates regardless of their age. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Was there someone else there that had a comment or question, Christy? Well, I want, it's Carmen, and I wanted to thank um, Andy for organizing this call because I know you're insistent. And, uh, uh, Chris, so much for channeling this. This is amazing to be part of this. Um, feel very special. And uh, I guess the Galactics are gone, but if they're not, thank you very much for uh, helping us here. It's just, uh, I really feel special about this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you, and I'm glad. I, I, was on the, trying, I was trying to get on the call last week thinking it was last week, and I'm glad I was persistent. Yeah. And uh, good luck on your first, Chris. Yeah, thank you, Carmen. Thank you. Well, th- that is uh, second by everyone, and, and, and thank you for that uh, vote of confidence and, and, and gratitude uh, and appreciation, Carmen. So, well, we will let you go, Chris, and, and we'll look forward to you on June 27th. And everybody have a wonderful, um, a wonderful uh summer uh, solstice and, and and remember uh, uh, you can contact me if uh, I'm sending out uh, 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 pictures of of the three uh, law of one and that, that Chris just shared with me uh, Archons, Reptilians and uh, Dr- Draco and, and obviously uh, there's enough that negative out there that it's so important to use these magic rewards. Good night, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Yeah, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Looking for healing or a change in your life to help you enjoy it more fully? You might benefit from a galactic energy reading and clearing from Chris Jacobs. Chris will work with you on a soul level to clear unseen negative influences, implants, programs, contracts, and energetic blocks. Chris Jacobs is a gifted energy healer. Contact him today at ChristopherStephenJacobs at gmail.com.